All right, I was riding around bikes with a good friend, Abby Brash. She stopped in San Francisco for the Super Bowl. And her and I were joking, would it be possible to make insulin at home? And that is what we are investigating tonight. All right, I know it doesn't look like much, but this is actually counterculture, so uh, we're going in here. Yeah, my name is Anthony DeFranco. Uh, I'm here at Counterculture Labs in Oakland, California. I'm working on the Open Insulin Project, uh, and that is uh, our team's effort to make a, uh, to develop an open source, simple, inexpensive, easy to reproduce protocol for making insulin. So, so my interest personally, not being a diabetic and, and you know, someone who's interested in, in science was the humanitarian aspect of it. And that's what I was explaining to you before. Uh, we want to be able to come up with uh, a strain of insulin that we can propagate throughout the world that's affordable, uh, an affordable one, and also just highly accessible because uh, in some areas it, people may be able to afford it, but it just isn't available there. So I was interested in an open source insulin pump and I was kind of talking that idea up with people. Another guy who'd read a blog post about making thyroid hormone uh, and how that might be feasible to do on a DIY basis using uh, like biotechnology techniques. And he heard what I was saying and then he said, why don't you think about doing insulin? And, and you're, you're doing it uh, very creatively by hook and by crook. Uh, so as you can see here, I mean, even though we're a volunteer organization, we get our funding from several uh, sources. One is from membership dues, another is from donations that are made by the community uh, around us, and we also get it from the classes and the workshops and, you know, that kind of stuff that we run. Uh, and, then, and then some angels who come along. So, for example, we have some pretty good funding for Open Insulin as a result, you know, of an angel donor. I know this is a lot of talking this episode, but it's really important to understand what's going on. This is a group of activists, not only type 1 diabetics, but humanitarians, who realize that the distribution of insulin, like globally, for the huge population, isn't occurring potentially because of intellectual property, as in there's not insulin that everyone can use and tap into because that falls into the hands of pharmaceutical companies. So the next section is going to be where that's going and then I really encourage you to keep listening. I know it's a lot of talking but Anthony talks about fascinating cooperative model saying what if diabetics basically represented themselves. So stay tuned. Uh, we've already ordered the uh, DNA for the new one, so hopefully in a couple of months we'll have one that just makes the insulin, secretes it, and since it's secreting it into the medium, we don't have to like break open the cells or anything, so it should be pretty easy to purify, and this will be a very, uh, a very strong foundation, I think, to to use to look at maybe going back to the bioreactor idea, or I mean the you know kind of the automated desktop factory bioreactor part about once we get the strain of insulin then you know just that you know what, what are the means to you know produce it in a way that's going to uh, meet our fundamental strategic goals and also what are the means of distributing it and uh, that are going to meet those goals you know let's say worldwide so looking at uh, how we can get production organized legally both in the U.S. and other places. We have some creative ideas for how to do that that I think should should do a good job of respecting all of the legal and regulatory requirements. And all right, wake up, because this is the crucial point. This is going from what they're doing, but into a theoretical new idea that I've actually never really heard someone talk about before, and and it's important for us. We start to look at like a patient-owned and controlled cooperative structure. Yeah. Do hopefully a much better job of respecting the needs of patients and of involving them directly and, and giving them a say over what gets done. So and. Uh, and, and, and there's a lot of interesting possibilities that, that opens up and I think the most important aspect of that is that it would, it would resolve this really long-standing problem of uh, the 
the, the, the incentives that the companies have not aligning well with what the patients need. So, you know, the companies need to make money, the stuff, the way you make the most money possible out of a diabetic is not what they want, right? Like, you don't want to, like, pay higher prices for more consumable stuff that is more complicated. You want the opposite of that. You want, like, stuff that's simple that you don't have to deal with very often, and ultimately you want to be cured, and you know, after you're cured, you're not gonna, no one's gonna be charging you any money, so that's, I think that's really the fundamental thing is, uh, uh, that, that we could address with this is, is that, you know, right now there's a, there's, there are big financial incentives to not work on viable cures, but um, if the, if the patients were involved and in control, they could direct the resources differently and just prioritize that. I want to give you a hug right now. That's like so cool. I yeah, think, if uh, you want to, go ahead. <laughs> yeah. right. I hope you're All successful. Right. Yeah. And this is what I can do. Um, <laughs> What's like your bucket list or dream list of? Yeah, well, I wish we were better set up right now. We, we're, we're just kind of getting through the basic science and engineering work that we need to do and then there's going to be really important work to do on all kinds of different fronts that are going to require all kinds of different skills, um, you know, legal, organizational, anything, you know, there, there'll be a place for anyone's uh, talents or interests to contribute. If you want to join in these conversations, um, just go to openinsulin.org and, and you can read more about the project on the, the press page and then go to the contact page and uh, you know, send us an email and we'll, we'll get you started. You can get in on the ground floor. Like. <laughs>